I'm going to be giving Endless Blizzard a try. Uh, I'm going into this completely blind, basically. I've heard whispers of this place being really big and really hard, so in my mind I've basically been picturing Endless Blizzard as like a snowy version of Vicious Gontelet. And uh, that intimidates me because Vicious Gontelet is like the one base game dungeon that I can't go anywhere near. I get crushed there, and in particular my, uh, maybe I'll be elf if this is a long one. In particular, my usual Avatar's Codex shenanigans type stuff. I have not gotten it to work in Vicious Gondolette. It just seems too darkness reliant. Like, whenever, like, I don't get enough darkness from each tower floor as I use getting mana to kill things, so I've, uh, Never managed to get higher than, I think, like, the... I forget how many floors. But people in the thread seem to think this build had a chance of winning this first try. Um, hello. Okay, there's no monsters here. Is this gonna be a Naga City type thing where you've got time to prepare and then you have to leave all this stuff behind? Oh god, I'm not ready. Uh, I find it hard to imagine I'm not going to be taking Soul Orb. Like, Mana Burn is just this build's one big weakness, so... Hmm, one gold piece short of being able to afford both Gloves of Midas and a uh, blue bead. I don't know what I'm going to be able to spend gold on after this first area, so I'm going to say blue bead is probably the more useful of these. And since I don't want gold to go to waste, I'm going to actually pick up a burn salve as well. Oh wait, I can't be mana burned. That might be stupid. Well, I can't afford the other thing, and it does remove Corrosion as well, which I don't... I can't completely ignore Corrosion. Although it's not as bad as... it, it doesn't feel as bad here as it does on other builds. Sorry, I'm babbling a little inanely here. Alright, uh, let's go! Blizzard is blinding and progressing forward is brutally difficult. You were lucky to find this crypt where you were safe from the snow, but you'll need to kill the monster leader to set up camp. Alright. Let's go then. End this wall. Okay, granted, I don't actually see any walls here yet, so... Maybe... Well, there's some walls. And this wall is just so good to have, and it's a safe way of casting spells. Interesting, so the first enemy dropped Endus Wall, and the second one dropped a health booster. So, I'm getting little prizes for each person I kill here, it seems. Hmm... Kind of reminds me of, what is it, Leaf Bronze? The one where, like, any every enemy drops a little... Are you gonna give me a prize? A mana booster? Cool. Alright, this guy must be the leader. And he's got Retaliate Fireball, so probably not gonna be too hard, because... Retaliate Fireball is not some- Oh god, what? 94 damage. Hmm. My essence was very thoroughly drained, it seems. Um, okay. I'm gonna kill the other monsters here and hope they give me some goodies that can help deal with whatever this nonsense is. Gold doesn't really help me, game. If 
I level up one more time, then I'll be just barely able to still die in one hit. Okay. So Endless Wall is going to be important here. I think that's my only way of... even fighting. Let me see, if I burn you... and then explore two tiles to, so I can end a swall burn again, does that work or do you live? Let me see, be at 22 after exploring two tiles, you're at 26. My fireballs and level 3 are dealing 30 a hit before the retaliate, so good. I don't need to worry about you undoing my nice end of swalling. Alright, that gets me the level up heal, so... Alright, gold! How'd I do, Balder? Ooh, hang on. Hey, Mystera, make my spells cheaper. Okay, now we can go. Okay, same shops as before. That's good to know. Alright, so Gloves of Midas actually is worth purchasing. Oh, they gave me a glyph too. I'm just gonna convert that. I'd like some more max mana. Probably should have bought the Witchlock Pendant. That would have helped a lot. Oh well. Let's go! Conditions have not improved. If anything, they seem to be getting worse the further eastwards you head. Alright. Regardless of what it says, the moral of the story is we need to clear the area. Luckily, I'm... Ooh! Blood to power. Don't want it. Oh, this place is bigger. I guess last place was pretty big too. I just thought it was smaller initially. Hmm. Alright, I can let the burning stack pop kill her. Punch the freezing ray. Burning stack pop. These death protections are not a challenge for me because each fireball takes off two or three layers of death protection since there's the fireball itself and then there's the when they retaliate my mana shield does damage again and then if I can pop, attack a weaker monster to pop the burning stack that's a third death protection all on the same fireball. So... I can see why people weren't expecting me to have too much trouble here. This is like typical monsters. And I think that's why I didn't have so much trouble on the Phantom Citadel either. I think it's less because this build is completely broken, although this build is pretty ridiculous, I won't lie. And more just that um, the monsters in this expansion feel very tailored to deal with the strongest strategies from the base game, like... 35 death protection. Oh! Uh, the strongest strategies from the base game... In particular... Didn't see the chaotic either. In particular... They seem... geared toward, uh... Shutting down those Orc of Binlor, Orc Monk of Binlor type builds. You know, lots of things with like Frostbite really sucks if you're planning on like punching the same enemy over and over again and letting your resistances handle it. Whereas, like most of the new Naga types, I didn't find myself too worried about their effects. Could pretty much just punch through them. So I'm not sure if it's because this build has like overwhelming raw power or if it's more just a case of 
it happens to have a really good matchup against the sort of monsters this expansion throws at you. So, I don't know. But I'm definitely seem to be having a lot more success here than in Gauntlet, and I think that's because these chambers are a lot bigger. This build is... What's the right word for it? Because, uh... When we were talking earlier, like, before I started making these videos about, uh, Curious Naga City, uh, Shade of Ox was saying that, you know, this pure caster thing doesn't use the darkness that well, because a lot of the time the health is wasted, and that's kind of true, but I think it also, it's, and it, it doesn't use darkness very efficiently, but it's very, very hungry for darkness, and that's why I was fine in Naga City Curious, because there's so much darkness, and that's why it wasn't fine in Gauntlet. And here it feels fine because there's just so much darkness everywhere. Like, these are much bigger rooms than the Tower of Gauntlet gave you. Go forth one last time? I guess we are getting near the end. Uh, hmm. If we're going forth one last time, i thinking I should maybe switch to the Earth Mother. Because I can't change gods when I'm not at this base camp. And Earth Mother would be really nice. I'm not sure I actually can switch to the Earth Mother, though. Because if I cast Endus Wall four times, that's what, two piety each? That doesn't get me to 50. Um, I guess I could drink some mana potions just to get the piety, just to switch to Earth Mother. If I didn't have Soul Orb, maybe that would be worth it. Since I do have Soul Orb, I think I'm just gonna say yeah, I'm fine. But if we are at the end, definitely want to convert these Gloves of Midas to get something. Make room for something else. A uh, Fireheart? Do I have a defensive item yet? I do. But none of the nothing else here is really that great for me. I'll take the Fireheart. Surely you know what to do by now. Okay, fair enough. I did, in fact, know what to do by now. I just wanted to see what you we were doing. I'm going to leave the level 1 alive, since being able to pop burning stacks is so useful. Do I have 28? That's not a small number. Now that is what I need. Mr. don't get mad at me. Alright, this guy's magic resist. That's why this is so hard. Well, let's get rid of some of that nonsense. Because they said this is the last area, I'm assuming not. This doesn't feel like it's been this doesn't feel like it's been long enough yet for this to be the true final area. I'm assuming that there's going to be like, you know, that thing most vicious dungeons do where like you thought you were done, but surprise, now you have to fight the avatar or something. This is exceedingly painful. F 
Fire Weaver, perfect. Physical resist, don't care about. Retaliate fire, well, don't care about. Unstable, don't care about. Corrosive, don't care that much about. So as far as I'm concerned, this is the like best possible kind of monster they could have had as our final opponent here. Uh, let's explore around a little more. I would like to find some more low-level monsters to maybe like get rid of this curse. I'd also like to remember I have Endus Wall. Well, kind of reminds me of a big version of that place where the Pact Maker lives in Gantelet. All right, uh, nothing further here. I don't think I need Wait What since I have the thing, the jig. Let's move on. Uh, I clicked through that too fast, but camp's been utterly destroyed. I. I feel like I should have seen that this coming, but I just didn't. Uh, it looks like it gave us a full heal when we came here, and even... Wasn't I still cursed when I left? So it gets rid of my curse stacks, too. I was going to say, I hopefully this means I can convert to Earth Mother. No such luck, it seems. Alright, that's a lot of magic resist. I'm probably going to have Mystera take care of that for me. Weakening blow, crazed regeneration, blinks. Crazed regeneration is full heal on each explorer, I think. And uh, between that and blinks... Okay, guess I'm taking you on second. You don't have fast healing. This was probably the monster to use my can of Wupaz on. Should probably have remembered I had that. Also, should probably get rid of my corrosions. Alright, one down, one to go. Let's... How much frostbite did I take? 90. Do resistances apply to... Frostbite? Maybe? Okay. I will be the first to admit it. That is extremely awkward. I cannot take a hit from this guy. And I have no way to cure the... Should have brought Wait What with me. I'm really wishing I had a Wait What right now. Really wishing. Really wishing I'd hit this guy partway through the fight with the frostbite dude. Since there's no monsters left to clear it. Hmm. I might have screwed myself. And now I really wish I was a gnome. Okay. I've got one shot, and that's to convert 
all of this junk that I can't use. A can of Wupaz converted. Got no way of getting enough Mystera piety to cast her thingamajig. So let's convert Endoswall as well. Blue bead can't trigger anymore, let's convert that. Uh, witch lock pendant, not relevant. I can't live through anything. Uh, soul orb, not relevant. Fire does not get me to another uh, conversion threshold thing. And I can already tell just at a glance, this is not going to be enough. Update. This was not, in fact, enough. Alright, well, I got really far. This feels like it might actually be the real final boss. If I'd been smarter about the frostbite, I think this would have been an easy win. Or if I'd been a gnome. If I'd been a gnome, all those conversions at the end would have given me enough to just fireball this thing to death. So, not a first time win, but I feel like I can do it second time. Which, for a vicious dungeon, is still really nice. So I'll take it. I wonder if it's always those two bosses, or if it's, like, random. And same with, like, the different levels. I wonder if there's, like... I wonder if it's, like, regular Gondolette, where there's different possible rooms and you won't see the same ones each time. Alright, so... That's kind of why I was surprised I won first time Phantom Citadel, because a lot of the time with Vicious Dungeons, there's like some sort of trick to it that you just haven't learned yet, or whatever. You just don't know the rules of the dungeon properly, and because of that, you're going to do something wrong and end up dying. But I would be very happy to take this on second try, and it feels very doable. This feels much more doable for a Codex build than Vicious Gauntlet, which I'm sure I'm sure some of you have managed to do it with a codex build, but it seems uh, quite beyond my capabilities, which is a bit embarrassing considering, you know, I, I only do one build. Is it always these same three gods? Plate mail's a good item. A lot of good items here, but no soul orb, so mana burn is going to be a big problem this time, but... Oh well, that's fair. Crystal ball could be nice. Actually, a lot of really good caster items here. Like, Soul Orb is the only good item that I'm really missing. Plate Mail is the best possible defensive item. Just a ball is great. I think I'm gonna go with Dragon Soul to start with. Just for some free value in the farming piety phase. A cave. This is different from before, so it does work like Gondolette. Okay, those are some nice level threes. There, there you go. There's someone I can actually interact with. Wanna fight? I guess I may as well cast a little bit while I'm here. Oh wow, good thing I did. No more essence drain for you.
And now I can take on all these level 3 armors. Nameless Beast. This looks a lot like that boss that killed me last time. So maybe it is a random bosses, and it's like whichever bosses. We didn't see a frozen troll last time, so maybe like it picks two bosses from the pool that you of monsters that you didn't encounter on your journey. Like, it would make sense flavor-wise. They're still around to come wreck your camp because you didn't encounter them yet. Are you a curse bearer? Nope, you make Mystera very sad, but that's fine. Oh wait, you die in two hits? Alright, they put up a bit less of a fight than I expected. I did lose a lot of piety there because most of the monsters had magical attack and then there were those corrupting auras. So I'm still paying six mana for all my fireballs. Let's see, I do think I want a defensive item now. And plate mail is the best defensive item there is. Alright, this looks like the place we were before. Oh, you're the boss. I'm glad Naga Fireweaver is the boss. Like, that's just great. Oh, there weren't Sun Priestesses last time. Maybe this is a different type of sub-dungeon or whatever. Are these sub-dungeons even? I guess so. The arena's a sub-dungeon. Mana burn. Really have to remember I'm vulnerable to that this time around. Finally got the cheaper fireballs. You are not a magic user, so I can kill you without fear of getting a punishment. Frostblade is a pain, but this time around there's lots of non-frost monsters present, so it's going to be easy to clear all of the frost. Frostblade was mostly a pain last time around because, like, it was mostly frostblades down here. Although I will admit this fight is not going as smoothly as I would have ideally imagined. Change of plans, I'm just going to kill the boss. I'm glad this build is one that can just go, I feel like killing the boss right now, I guess I'll do that. Alright, the boss was level 7, so nothing here will ever be worth bonus XP for me. So I don't need to worry about that.
Uh, it's worth stepping in goop just to get gold. The shop items were really, really good, so I think the answer is yes it is. If nothing else, it'll pay for my uh, burn self. I like that they remove most of your conditions when you come here. Alright, burn salve I think is the way to go. I don't seem to be able to afford um, anything else except crystal ball, but that's fine. Crystal ball is I think the best thing here. The one thing I'm really sad about is, once again, I can't convert out of Mystera into the Earth Mother. I guess I could desecrate the Earth Mother to convert to Glowing Guardian, but I really don't think I want to do that. I've got a lot of potions. I'm a gnome. Alright, I'm going to do some inventory shenanigan where I drink the can of Wupaz, and I'm just not going to actually use it for a long time. Just doing that to make room in my inventory. I'm gonna try to save this as long as I can. Oh, is it this? Okay, so... There's not that big a pool of... possible places, but like, it's also not a fixed order because this was round two last time and now it's round three. piecemeal way they feed you your uh, various prizes in these places. It's just a fun mechanic. Oh right, death protection 50. I think I'm going to have to use my can of Wupaz on you then, because there's no way I'm going to be able to like just cast enough to knock you down without doing some punches mixed in. Interesting how it says safe when it's going to die to the mana shield. The predictor doesn't seem smart enough to understand like the mana shield death protection stuff. Last time it was a I guess it is still four corner islands. They're just not distributed as cleanly now. Uh do I have is there enough experience here to level? Let me see, 7, 7, 7 is 21. So if I killed all of these I could level up. I don't think I have the resources to. There's too much darkness. My whoop has effect. Oh, there it is. So there's a maximum of 75% health. I'm pretty sure that's exact, because I've definitely seen Whoop has deal make me deal less damage than I normally would. <laughs> oh, here it's uh, dying to my mana shield, not to the actual punch. That explains it. Oh, I got plate mail, so 
I just need to uh, do enough hits to get its attack down low, and once I've done that, it'll deal literally no damage. <laughs> okay, that looks really funny, the way it bounces you around. Oh good, that's a lot of gold. Uh, can I leave yet? Good, good. I don't really want to fight all these other jerks. Well, you're lower level than me, so I may as well punch you to death. I have plate mail. I can't punch you to death. Fine, whatever. I really wonder if, like, it's always the same three altars, or if that's just a crazy coincidence. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, and it has Retaliate Fireball, so I can't even... I should have known that was coming. Okay, but that means two of the rooms I saw before were the same, and the third has its boss here, and it's replacing the boss of the new room I saw. So maybe there's five possible rooms, and you're always going to get three rooms and two bosses? And there's like a frozen troll room that I've just not encountered yet? Okay, plate mail means I can just punch frozen troll to death? Why am I taking so little damage? Oh! My, uh... Defensive thingamajig. Endoswall is applying. Okay. Okay. I've got Endoswall. This isn't unwinnable. It's not unwinnable. need to do lots of endoswalling. Oh, Mister, you've got some stuff for me. Sure, I'll remember that you exist and suddenly decide to buy, like, 50 boons. Alright, and now I can just punch this guy, right? Oh good, Frostbite works the same as Corrosion. Although I probably should have done something smarter to kill it in a way that doesn't give me 115 stacks of Frozen. Okay, maybe there's six different sub-dungeons and the true final bosses. Balder, what are you doing? Balder, stop. Please. Alright, Frostbite still ignores resistances, so that's still terrible for me. I shouldn't be surprised, because that makes sense. It was designed to counter, like, resistance builds, I'm pretty sure. Alright. So long anything that doesn't make me better at casting spells. Wait, what? Repo repost. Oh. Oh. If I deal any damage to him, he does damage back to me. 
And uh, any damage he does to me is lethal because I am super, super frostbitten. If I could deal just one damage to this guy, then he would retaliate and deal almost exactly my health, but I'd live. But I don't see any way to get myself down to one damage. What I really, what I really want is to be able to desecrate Tiki Tuki and then punch a plant until I'm at one strength. Huh. Okay. Alright, learning experience. I think I understand this dungeon really well. Let's restart. Because I think the same starting build as last time is going to work. Okay, not fixed bosses. I've just been getting ridiculously lucky to get Mysterra and Nur every time. Wait, I prepped Mysterra and Nur. Getting her every time isn't luck. That's guaranteed. Okay, I might be a bit of an idiot. Nice defensive items, but not much offensively. I really want a mana item of some sort, and the best it can offer me is what? A pendant of mana? Okay. Let's get the plate mail because it is completely amazing as a defensive item. And Sally Forth. Okay, good. We're getting the Soul Sucker out of the way now, so I don't need to worry about remembering to spend all my mana before I explore into him. When I get to the boss room. Mana burn, you say? Alright, I think I just don't kill any thralls. Why did I walk into the boss while having mana? I guess this little thr thrall I can just- that I can kill in one fireball I can kill. Is that gonna leave me, like, under-geared later? Barely alive? Yeah, sure, whatever. Kills the boss of this wave, I don't mind being barely alive. Turn you to stone because I can't actually kill you. This time I could convert to Earth Mother, except it's not. Oh, wait! Mystic Balance, right, I knew there was something I wanted. Uh, anything good here? Battle Mage Ring is okay. Like, it's normally good for a caster. I think on a Codex Sorcerer it's not so important because between the Fireball's base damage and Avatar's Codex and our Mana Shield and Mystera's Flames and the maxed out Burning Stacks, we're basically dealing 12 per level per Fireball already, so adding a 13th per level isn't that impactful. 
I think Pendant of Man is actually the best use of my inventory space here. I haven't been having trouble leveling up, so I'm going to just convert the... Ooh, this is the uh, Frost Troll sub-dungeon that I expected would exist. As foretold. Oh, for God's sake. Wait. I have death protection, so I can... I can just punch this guy in take God. Oh, you deal more than one damage. That was stupid and careless of me. One more try, one more try. Alright, this is kind of the opposite of last time. We're spoiled for mana items, but we don't really have any defensive items at all. I guess Serpentine Shield? Which maybe Serpentine Shield is okay? I mean, it'll certainly have to do, but... It can block mana burn potentially, which is good because that's the one the one magic related item we didn't get was Soul Orb. Mage Plate is going to be better later. I think I'm gonna want Serpentine Shield eventually, so I'm gonna take it now, just so that I can start getting like Basically just in case I get a bad sub-dungeon and I really need to, like, block a mana burn. Curse Bear jokes on you. I have no defense whatsoever. The game didn't give me any. But realistically, I also can't actually fight you at level 1. You I can. Let me see. Don't really want let me see. No reason to convert it right now, but I probably will soon. this? I don't think I saw you even last time. Berserk's at 50%. Dead, bloodless, cowardly. Troll scientist, I'm guessing, is from Troll Laboratory originally. It's weird how the boss frozen troll has frostbite and the little ones don't.
Okay, you don't have fast regen, so I can actually poison you and it won't wear off. Why did that wear off? Oh, magic resist. I don't actually poison you very much. Interesting. Attacking this guy made me take no damage because of my damage reduction, but even though I didn't actually take damage, it still removed the frostbite. That is not an interaction I knew about. Cool. Uh, this says next hit red boom, but it's actually a green boom. It's because of that uh, weird quirk in how the predictor interprets. It seems like after a certain point, enemies stop dropping prizes. Maybe it's if they're lower level than you, they don't drop prizes, or maybe it's once you kill the boss, or maybe it's just a certain number of prizes that can drop in each room. And once they've all dropped, no more. Let me see, I don't want. I've got enough levels now that I think Mage Plate would be nice. Oh good, the Undead Place. I was thinking when I came in here, okay, I, when I see the blood stains, I need to step on them when I have no mana. And then, of course, I saw the blood stains and I just stepped on them at full mana. This time I don't really have a proper defensive item. Can't survive the counter attack. Can I level up? Five 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 four 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 one one. Yes, killing every single monster here, aside from the boss, will level me. Oh, 
stop getting mad at me, Miss Dareth. Oh, hey. There- I missed a monster. Okay, and now I should be able to survive or retaliate. Perfect. Good. I was really worried to have to convert my codex there, which would basically kill the run. I always end up here without enough piety to convert. Maybe I desecrate Jehora Jehayu. What does he do? Like, make you lose a third of your health and mana? I think even if I get punished for desecrating Jehora, it's still worth it to have access to the Earth Mother. Let's do it! Okay! No punishment is much better than punishment. <laughs> that is something I'm sure of. But even if I had been punished, I think it would have been worth it, because Earth Mother is just going to be so useful in the endgame, pretty much regardless of who the final bosses are. Let's get rid of a feel seek to make room for more nice things. Let me see, do I want the blue bead? Oh, there was an agnostic scholar. That I should that's probably what I should have done. Well, what's done is done. I think I'll just buy another Schadenfreude potion. That seems like it probably can't be wrong. I'll just squeeze a little more mana out of Mystera before I say goodbye to her. Alright, Naga Place. That's kind of unfortunate, because it seems like it's always a Fire Weaver who's the boss here, or at least the was the two times I've been here, and getting a Fire Weaver as one of my final bosses would be fantastic. Can I just fireball you down? Oh, okay, so it does seem- I think it is a matter of there's a fixed number of drops each wave, because it seems like the first monster you kill in each room is the one that gives you a glyph. I could just leave now. Like, I don't actually have to stay, I could just leave and be incredibly rude to my hosts. Alright, I don't need to cast spells all the time to farm piety on Mystera. She's gone. She's never coming back. No mana burn, thank you. I probably shouldn't have done that, actually, since I don't use physical attacks. I will take the Corrosion for another pile of gold, because that's going to mean at least one more use of Crystal Ball. Let's go! Oh, I should have had Earth Mother take advantage of all those blood pools. That was stupid. Oh, it's Death Protection Guy! <sighs> ok, 
Okay, this is a bit funny how I'm actually cut off from the lightness. I have to manually explore to find my way back to the rest of the map. I really love being able to spam right click on that guy. Um, okay. Weakening blow, that's fine. Yeah, right, you were only a problem last time because I was all frostbitten. I'm really tempted to explore one tile, but that seems unwise. Mother's uh, being slowed does not prevent repost from applying. So that's information. Slowing is still useful, though, because it prevents uh, the retaliate damage. I took a bunch of extra damage reductions there because I feel like my limiting factor here is definitely health, not mana. Fortunately, I don't have a way of turning mana into health. Which, maybe a, maybe that a feel seek I converted earlier is what I really need. I'm actually making progress with this. Every five tiles I explore heals. Yeah, I think this region fighting is making progress. Question is whether I have enough darkness left. Maybe next hit repost still applies even if they die, I guess. Whew. Okay, that gave me access to some more dark spaces. Whew. It's a win! Okay, so that was, uh, that was, what, four attempts? Oh, for God's sake, how are we not done? I can't retrace your steps without a guide. Perhaps you will learn the truth. Oh, okay, the good, the good, this isn't part of the dungeon, really. It's, oh, they're giving me an altar, though. I'm hoping this is just one of those, like, you know, you unlock a new thingamajig or something. Oh god, I clicked through that. What did he say? What the crap is happening? Okay, it's like, um, the Avatar's chambers. Really wish I'd seen what this guy said. I think if I use entanglement, well, it'll block off this whole path, but more importantly, it'll make all of these guys dizzy, so I should be able to kill them in one hit without getting frostbitten. 
seems extremely worth it. Oh. They cannot be frostbitten. Perhaps your health and you fear you will not last long. I don't know what that means. I kind of wish this predictor was honest and you could just fireball them for nothing just to gain some health. Numbing your brain. I don't know what the stuff about numbing your brain is. I feel like it's telling me new mechanics, like a new rule that has just been added at this stage of the boss fight, but I can't actually figure out what the rule is, so. And I don't see any uh, indicators up here of what it could be. No defensive items really hurt me this run. I had the crystal ball, but I never used it because mana was never my limiting factor. Health always was. I guess I should have bought a health potion at the apothecary instead of a schadenfreude, but that wasn't the smart thing to do. But even then, like... Oh, my max man is going down. Okay, at least I can still survive a single hit. So I can still do one attack per level. Please. With one final push, you assault the demon and it dissipates into a cloud of snowflakes. Warmth floods your body, and the demon slowly abates. Miles and miles of now visible frozen wasteland confront you on all of every side, but you spot the faint glow of an outpost in the distance. For all your trials, the only reward you have to show for it is a frozen crown that appears to be of Naga origin. You aren't quite sure what it's doing here, but at least it looks like it'd fetch a good price. Minus two burned as damage per level, plus one burning strike. Burning reduces enemy regen by two. What does burning strike mean? Is that the war garble effect? Interesting. It's a weird item. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll make room for that. <laughs> See a shield. So I'm done for real now, right? Because it said exit win last time, and that turned out to be a lie. Whew! Okay, I did it! Which, and it was basically on my first try if you don't count the three tries before that. No, no, I, I felt like that was very fair. It took me several tries to learn how the dungeon worked, how, what stupid things I needed to avoid doing. Um, 
That last fight was really, really cool. I really like that mechanic of eventually you get so frostbitten you can only attack once per level, but you get a ton of free level ups. Like, that's just a really... Like, it's unlike anything I've seen anywhere else in the game. It's a really clever fight, and it looked impossible when I first saw it, and then I actually was able to do it on my first try. So it's clearly not as impossible as it looked, at least not with Avatar's Codex. So yeah, I don't know. That was really, really fun. Although the tales of lead were a pack of lies, the fading blizzard will surely have massive effects on the east one day. You're pretty sure you can push this gradual warming ish uh, issue onto the next generation, and in the meantime, some funding for your alchemist to study it might produce a new seal. Use on a target booster to disperse its power for a one-time benefit. Effects vary by booster does not come with booster back satisfaction guarantee. Huh! It's not expecting that. Okay, so that... really wish I'd seen that boss's text. That demon we fought, maybe that's what Namtar summoned that made the whole east get all icy? And, like, now that we've killed it, the east will gradually de-ice, but really slowly so we don't actually see it in game, like when you finish the water temple and Sheik says Zora's domain will someday unfreeze. Yes, incredibly timely modern reference. Okay, um, so that was really cool. Uh, thank you for putting up with me. Um, I, I didn't, uh, get the first time win like my loyal fans predicted. I'm, I'm gonna count them as fans, but you know, I'm still very happy with how that turned out. And that's a really fun, really unique dungeon. So thank you.